the hindu marriage is the most important of all the 16 sanskaras in one's life and the rites of passage described in the dharma shastras to know in detail about all the 16 sanskaras watch the video linked in the comments below marriage is regarded to be a sacrament by hindus rather than a form of social contract since they believe that all men and women come together for procreation and practice dharma together as ordained by the vedas the brahmana state that a man is only said to be complete after marrying a woman and acquiring progeny in hinduism the four goals of life which are referred to as the purushartha are regarded to be righteousness which is dharma wealth which is artha pleasure which is kama and liberation which is moksha to understand these concepts of purushartha in detail watch the video linked in the comments below marriage is considered to be necessary to fulfill these goals in one's life the three goals of marriage including allowing a husband and a wife to fulfill their dharma bearing progeny and experiencing pleasure sexual intercourse between a husband and a wife is regarded to be important in order to produce children but is the least desirable purpose of a marriage in hindu tradition vivah which originally meant the wedding ceremony but has to acquire the definition of a marriage as a whole is meant for procreation and the establishment of a family or kutumb after one's wedding one is believed to have entered the second stage of life the grihastha ashram performing the duties of a householder hindu texts such as atharva veda and manusmriti identify eight forms of marriage they are traditionally presented in the order of their religious appropriateness they also differ very widely in social acceptability while all these marriages are recognized not all have religious sanction four of them are declared to be righteous and the other four are stated to be non righteous brahma vivah the brahma vivah is a righteous form of marriage it refers to the marriage of one's daughter to a man of good conduct learned in the vedas and invited by himself brahma vivah is where a boy is able to get married once he has completed his education in the first stage of life as a brahmacharya after completing his education and acquiring all the required skills the groom's family approach the family of the girl bride's father then inquires about the birth conduct character learnings acquirements and the acts of the groom before bestowing his daughter to him when the parents of the boy seek a suitable bride they consider her family's background and the girl's father would ensure that his daughter's prospective groom is a scholar one who is well versed in the vedas thus it is considered to be the highest form of marriage in the scriptures also there is no dowry involved in this viva deva viva the deva viva is a righteous form of marriage it is a form of marriage unique to the ancient brahmins in this the bride's family waits for a suitable groom if she doesn't get married to a suitable groom till a specified time her family looks to getting her married to a priest who officiates over sacrifices in simple words the father gifts his richly bedecked daughter's hand in marriage to a priest who does his sacrificial ceremony this form of marriage is ranked as the second most meritorious and is considered inferior to brahma marriage however this marriage is regarded to redeem the sins of the seven ascendants and the seven descendants of the family it is called such because it is believed to be worthy of the devas themselves arshaviva the arshaviva is a righteous form of marriage in sanskrit arsha means rishi in this form of marriage usually the groom is a rishi or a sage the bride is married off to a rishi in exchange for two cows or a cow and a bull it is a form of marriage where a man gifts his daughter as a bride after receiving one pair of cattle a cow and a bull or two pairs from the groom the exchange being perceived as a matter of the law rather than the sale of the former's daughter this also goes to show 
that the man does not possess extraordinary wealth. It usually happens when the bride's family is not able to bear the expenses of their daughter's marriage. Prajapati Viva The Prajapati Viva is a righteous form of marriage. Unlike Brahma marriage, in this type of marriage, an eligible groom is enticed with wealth and presence by the bride's father to marry her daughter. However, according to Manusmriti, a marriage is termed as Prajapatya when the father gives away his daughter with due honour, saying, May both of you perform your civil and religious duties, and a verbal agreement to practice the dharma together. In the Prajapati Viva, the bride's father goes in search of a groom rather than the other way around, which makes it inferior to the Brahma Viva. Gandharva Viva the Gandharva Viva is a form of marriage classified as non-righteous in general. It is synonymous with the modern-day love marriage or elopement. The most famous example is the marriage of Dushyant and Shakuntala in Mahabharat. In this form of marriage, the couple either lives together out of love or mutual consent or marry each other out of their own free will without the consent of their families. It is cohabitation that arises out of the mutual love shared between a youth and a maiden, where the primary purpose is sexual intercourse. No consultation of one's family members or the performance of ritual ceremonies take place. It is generally considered to be acceptable to the members of Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudravarna, according to the Smriti texts. Though it has grown increasingly common in the present day due to the practice of dating amongst the new generation. Asura Viva The Asura Viva is a non-righteous form of marriage. It is a form of marriage where the bridegroom receives a maiden after having given his own free will as much wealth as he can afford to the bride and her family. In this form of marriage, the bride's family is enticed by wealth in return for bestowing their daughter. This usually happens when the groom is no match for the girl but still wants to marry her. It is like buying a product by paying a huge amount of money. Thus, this form of marriage is also considered inferior to Brahma Viva. As a form of marriage performed by paying a bride price, it is generally stated to be forbidden, though it is sometimes cited to be allowed for the members of the Vaishya and Shudra community. Rakshasa Viva The Rakshasa Viva is a non-righteous form of marriage. In this type of marriage, the girl is forcibly abducted by the groom by killing or defeating the bride's family in a battle. It is a marriage performed after a non-consenting maiden is seized by force or abducted by the man. When such a maiden is abducted, she is described to weep as her relatives are assaulted and slain, and their house is wrecked. The marriage is then celebrated in the absence of the father of the bride and by the members of the groom's family. It is an unacceptable form of marriage that is condemned by Manusmriti and is punished by law in the society of the present day. Peshachaviva The Peshachaviva is the most non-righteous and the sinful form of marriage. When a man steadily rapes a woman who is asleep, intoxicated or mentally challenged, it is regarded to be a marriage, though only to preserve the honour of the woman. This is condemned in the Manusmriti as a sinful act. In modern times, this is classified as a form of rape and is a crime in most countries. The last two forms of marriage are forbidden and prohibited in Hinduism, but the marriages themselves were recognised in ancient times not to allow these acts, but rather to provide the woman and any resulting children with legal protection in the society. It is important to note that the above eight types of marriages are only relevant in the ancient times. In the present times, marriages are, should and must be done according to the Indian constitution.